Okay, welcome to the final in our series of uh, videos looking at labour market diagrams. Uh, just simply how you can use labour demand, labour supply diagrams as part of your analysis if you get a labour market question in your exams. So what about zero hour contracts, ZHC? A zero hour contract, of course, is where uh, the employer does not guarantee a minimum number of hours to, to somebody to work the following week. Likewise, the employee doesn't have to guarantee to be able to offer a number of hours per week. And the zero hour contract is very controversial. It's uh, widely seen as being a key part of, of having a flexible labour market. There are costs and benefits both to the individuals concerned, to businesses and I guess also to families. But how can we use uh, zero hour contracts just in the labour market diagram? That's our main purpose of this video. Well, let's assume, for example, we've got an increase in demand for takeaway food, let's say. So there's a shift towards people ordering takeaway foods. Now, uh, you can make a case for saying with if zero hour contracts are pervasive, if many employers rely heavily on these, labour demand shifted out. We need more people uh, to deliver food and what have you, parcels and packages and things. Well, it depends on the extent to which there is real flexibility in the labour market. In theory, at an occupational level, if you have a very flexible labour supply with zero hour contracts, you could almost draw the labour supply as perfectly elastic. What that means is if the demand for labour goes up, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to you have to pay more to get the extra workers. Therefore, employment can go up from E1 to E2 without there necessarily being an increase in the wage that you have to pay. Of course, other factors could come into play. The labour supply curve could shift inwards. In other words, there could be a fall in labour supply or you have to just offer more across the board to get the workers you need um, uh, independently of the contracts. But one of the features of labour flexibility is that that might make the labour supply curve very elastic in response to an increase in demand, which is clearly good news for the employer. Whether that's good news for the employee is another matter. Interestingly, in the UK at the end of 2021, this, this data is interesting, I think, that 25% of people in work um, in accommodation and food sectors were on a zero hours contract. One in four. That's really high, isn't it? Health and social were at 19%. Uh, transport, the arts, other services, 13%. I guess that would be things like uh, uh, delivery drivers and things. Wholesale and retail, 12%. Education, 8%. Maybe that's the rise of supply teaching, where supply teachers are not guaranteed hours each week or each month. But in industries such as public administration, the civil service and uh, construction, well, zero hour contracts barely noticeable. Only 2% of people working in construction were on a zero hours contract. So it really does depend on the type of occupation and industry. Overall, um, the figures are now coming down a little bit after a surge about uh, five, 10 years ago. Uh, there was a five-fold increase in the number of people on zero hours contracts in the UK. It peaked at just over a million which has, I guess, about through two and a half, three percent of the labour force. So about one worker in 30, one worker in 35. That's now coming down a little bit, but there has clearly been a sea change in the labour market. There are now many, many more people on zero hours contracts. So this is clearly a topical issue. There we go. Six short videos on labour market diagrams together, about 30 minutes of revision. I hope you found them useful. Good luck in your exams if you get labour market questions. Stay safe, stay curious, and see you again sometime soon.